Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James, turn to Romans chapter 1. Uh, boy, this, one, this chapter is going to be totally illegal as hate speech one day. But we're talking about the Godhead. And uh, I've got the play. It's There's a playlist. I did the introduction, and then I did Acts 17. Now we're going to do Romans 1. And then it's Colossians something or other, which I'll have to look it up. But I did an entire Bible study on why Jesus is God. I mean, the Bible teaches that uh, all things were created by him. And if you're a Jehovah's Witness person, you'll say, well, you know, God the Father made God the Son, and then, or, you know, the Son of God, and then let him create everything, which means they got two gods. And then they'll say, we got three gods. But, and then the, it's a mess. And I'll admit, the Godhead is not an easy doctrine to understand. And I'm not going to tell you that I understand it perfectly, but I know the evidence. So let's read Romans 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. That's right, by Christ himself. Called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised be afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. And his name is Jesus, who is the Christ. Not Yeshua HaMashiach. That's not the name. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among whom also ye are, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, didn't know Paul was a southerner, huh? For you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole earth. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. Don't be ignorant, brethren. Ignorant just means uh, you lack knowledge in something. You know, you don't know something. Uh, when it comes to physics and uh, calculus, I am ignorant, totally. Brain surgery, ignorant. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oft, oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Gentiles and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. You know, uh, back in Paul's day, the church at Rome was a good godly church, I'm sure. Well, things have changed. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. 
For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. See, the New Testament was written in Greek. There's people who deny that, but it was. Uh, of course, the Greeks had conquered the entire Middle East until uh, Rome came along, and then they took it from the Greeks. Uh, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Yeah, there's no evolution here, people. You know, just look around. You think all this stuff came by accident? And people will say, well, where did God come from? Well, maybe the same place where all this just, you know, the world just happened to come from. You know, I don't know where God came from. But neither can you tell me where, how everything just happened to come into being, you know. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his external power and Godhead, even his external power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. You know, they were ungrateful. I mean, they knew God, but they didn't glorify him as God. And they were not thankful. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Vain means worthless. Their imaginations were worthless, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise... They became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Yeah, you know, they take images and say, oh, this is God, you know, an image, an idol. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Uh, God gave them up? I mean, God gives up on them. He, he says, yeah, hey, you guys want to do what you want to do? No problem. I'll let you do whatever you want to do to a point. Verse 25. Uh, well, let's read 24 again. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Sounds like modern Bible versions to me. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God, I did a whole Bible study on for this cause. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, go to San Francisco. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, 
God gave them over to a reprobate mind. What's a reprobate? Somebody that's just the worst heathen that you could imagine. God gives them over to a reprobate mind. You know, there's a point. Uh, let me look something up real quick. In Romans 2 and verse 4, we read, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee the repentance? Do you know that the, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance, to turn from their wicked ways? Well, guess what? There is a time where the Lord just gives up on them. He just, oh, you want to be living your wickedness? No problem. And he just gives them over to a reprobate mind. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, covetousness, greed, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. You ever heard of a, like a cancer's malignant? Malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, they don't keep their word, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, see these people know the judgment of God, don't ever let somebody say that these, those people that live in San Francisco do not know the judgment of God. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And that, everybody, is Romans chapter 1. And it mentions the Godhead. That's why I read it. So, all right, that's the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.